welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Before we do get started, uh, I do want to uh, encourage you to pick up a copy of my latest ebook. All I Needed to Know, I Learned from Dragnet. It is available in the Kindle and uh, Nook store. You can also find it uh, through uh, our, our Great Detectives of Old Time radio store at store.greatdetectives.net, where you can pick up all of my books and audiobooks. Well, now it's time for today's episode of Crime and Peter Chambers, Murder at the Masquerade Party. The original air date, July the 13th of 1954. Crime and Peter Chambers. <laughs> Created by Henry Kane, transcribed and starring... Dane Clark. Private investigator, duly licensed and duly sworn, Peter Chambers. You're a private eye. That's your business. Anything else? That's for laughs. This one figures for a lot of laughs, and you're being paid for it, which adds a rare quality to the laughter. You're at the apartment of a jeweler, George Reiner, and you're being invited to a masquerade party at the Riverdale mansion of a famous, or uh, is it infamous, millionaire, Robbie Tamville. And who hasn't heard of Robbie Tamville? And uh, I'd like you to get there before I do, Mr. Chambers. All the arrangements have been made. Um, uh, what will you wear? Well, I don't quite know, Mr. Reiner. You've <laughs> sprung this on me uh, rather quick-like. Oh, a man of your resourcefulness? Come now, Mr. Chambers. Think of your reputation. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking. Tonight, 8 o'clock. Well, let me see now. Well, I've got an idea. Something oh. that's never been done before. Yes? Uh, pirate's costume. Good. No patch over the eye. Very good. A and just so that I'll be sure, don't wear a sword. <laughs> then I'll know for certain that you're my pirate. Okay, Mr. Reiner, I'll be your pirate. No cutlass, no patch. Mm. Now, let's get back to the business end of the deal, please. Uh, well, sir, you've heard of the Opal of Ramses? Opal? Well, yes. Owned by King Ramses and a priceless objet d'art. Only wasn't it supposed to have brought hard luck to this ancient Egyptian king and hard luck to everyone that's owned it since it was dug up? Oh, Shaw, sure, Mr. Chambers. Superstition. Pure, baseless superstition. So how come Robbie Tamville is so anxious to get rid of it? Well, he's had a run of bad luck, and now that it is offered for sale, I have the opportunity to purchase it. Yeah, you and this, uh, uh what's his name? Uh, William Zuckel. And good old eccentric Tamville makes it a bidding contest between you and this, uh, William Zucco. Um, I'm to come dressed as a clown. Uh, there, there's the costume. Do you like it? Yeah, it's peachy. Uh, William Zucco is coming dressed as a Persian prince. Anyway, one way or another, tonight, Robbie Tamville gets rid of the ring. Yes, he'll have the opal there tonight at the party. Uh, uh, first, he'll interview Zucco, and then he'll interview me. Whoever bids highest, that one gets the ring. There'll be contracts to sign, and then the cash is to be deposited with his bankers tomorrow. Uh, how much is that thing worth? Oh, about a quarter of a million. I know a collector right now who'd pay 200000 And my job? To accompany me back to town as bodyguard, and to remain with me as custodian of the Opal until I can reach my office tomorrow and where proper transferals of insurance can be executed. Hmm. Okay, I'll see you tonight. I'll be there, P.D. the Pirate. Afternoon, Mr. Reiner. And remember, you know the costume. I'm the clown. So that evening, you're living it up amongst the swells. Everybody's wearing masks and everybody's wearing costumes, but your client, the clown, hasn't shown up yet. But meanwhile, you've latched on to a female with a lush and lovely figure, incongruously attired as a witch. You've danced, you've chortled, you've chuckled, but now you're dying of curiosity. So you waltz her off to a corner. 
<laughs> yes, my dashing buccaneer. Pray, what wish you of the witch? A mask of witch, else this pirate walks the plank. If anything is prosaic as a plank can be found in this diamond studded shack. Will you unmask too? Because I'm just bursting with curiosity. You take your mask off and she follows suit, and brother, you hit the jackpot. Blue eyes, tiny nose, dimples, and a wicked little smile that just verges on being seductive. Like? Oh, I love it. Good. Because I like what I see, too. So, let's get acquainted. My name is Patricia Holmes. Uh, Peter Chambers. What do you do? Well, I'm a detective of sorts. Detective? How very interesting. Yes. You look like an actor, a leading man type, you know. Yeah, and you like an ingenue. Say, what do you do? I'm a doctor. A doctor? <laughs> well, now. Disappointed? Oh, I'm flabbergasted. For further information, over 21 and unmarried, specialized in fluoroscopy and x-ray. Uh, look, Doc, I, I got a small pain that hurts me here, see? <laughs> I conduct my examinations at my office. Oh, I'd love to visit. You may at that. I combine my office and my apartment, 441 Park. I uh, didn't take my car. I was driven here by a group of friends. So if you've a car here... I have. <laughs> well, Mr. Chambers, after this party, I'd admire to have you take me home. And there isn't a thing in the world that I'd admire more, Doctor. <laughs> well, thank you. But all the while you're talking, some joker is jostling you from the rear. True enough, the joint is crowded, but that crowded it ain't. And finally, you whirl on the guy who's wearing the toga of a Roman senator. Oh, I'm sorry, Mac. It's a little crowded now, here. Wait a minute, Buster. It's not that crowded, so take it. <laughs> Real sensitive, uh, dear old private optic. Hey. <laughs> Is it because he's engaged in conversation with so beautiful a damn... Louis! Louis Parker! <laughs> Detective Lieutenant Louis Parker, New York City Police Department. Fine cop, good companion, and great friend. You introduce him to the lady. Good to know you, Miss Holmes. Likewise, Lieutenant. Hey, what are you doing here, Louis? Well, I got a hunch it approximates your reason for being here. Oh. I'd uh, like to talk to you, Pete, uh, if... Uh... <laughs> That, Miss Holmes, means that the courteous lieutenant would like to talk to me alone, but in the circumstances, he finds it difficult to express. Your beauty, Miss Holmes, <laughs> makes it even more difficult. Hey, hey, listen. You You're like most it. gallant, Lieutenant. If you promise not to keep Mr. Chambers away too long. I promise. Good enough, then. I'll see you later. Isn't she cute, Louis? Now, listen, Pete, I'll tell you why I'm here. <laughs> Develops Tamville isn't too eccentric after all. What with carrying that opal ring around on his person, he invites Parker to his party so as he can have some law and order around the house, just in case. You give Louis the dope on why you're present. Which means that outside of you and me and Tamville, the only ones who know that this ring is here tonight are George Reiner and this William Zucco. That's straight from the horse's mouth, which is Tamville. Now, Pete... Hey, look... You look, and you see the Persian prince strolling out to the garden. He looks hot, and he's taking off his mask. Let's go join him, Petey, just for the heck of it, huh? Yeah, it's cooler out there. Uh-uh, mustn't forget the bottle. Oh, we mustn't. <laughs> this is Parker's night for relaxation. You bring a bottle and three glasses out to a table in the garden. The Persian prince is nearby, mask off. You call him over, introduce him, and offer a drink. William Zucco is a tall guy whose black eyes give off about as much expression as a couple of shuttered windows in an empty house. You're about to hand him his glass when it slips to the ground. Well, you can't hand a Persian prince a dirty glass, so you pick it up, wipe it clean with a handkerchief, and you try again. Then you pour for the three of you, and you all drink. Ah... <sighs> Ah, good. That uh, hits the spot, as they say. Thank you, Mr. Chambers. Would you like another, as they say? No, 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 no. Thank you. You know, uh, you look real right handsome as a Persian prince, Mr. Zucco. Oh, no, no, no. Not really. That was uh, Robbie Tamville's idea. 
And you don't cross Tanville, not when you intend to do a little business with him. Ah, uh, you uh, intending to do business with Mr. Tanville? Well, uh, yes, I think so. <laughs> Just then, a butler comes out and tells Zucco that Tamble is ready to see him. You all go back into the house, and the butler opens an oak door for William Zucco. You can see inside, it's a big room with wide French windows on the far side opening to another garden. Tamble's inside, the only guy at the party not in costume. Zucco goes in, and the door closes. You lose Parker, and you find Patricia home again and you keep her with you. And finally, Zucco comes out and goes up a flight of stairs. And then, not five minutes later, your client, the clown, appears. You wave to him, but he doesn't wave back. He proceeds directly to the oak door, goes in, and then... The shots are from Tambell's room, and you and Parker are busting there fast. The French windows are wide open. There's no one in the room except Tambell, and he's very dead. All right. All right, everybody out of here. I'm Detective Parker, police. Now, get them out, please. Everybody out. Come on. You stick around, Petey. Out, out. That's right, out. Nice, huh? Yeah. Real nice. Whoever pulled it beat it through those French windows. But the gun's here. You pick it up with the pencils of the trigger guard, like so. Hey, Pete. Huh? Hey, take a look. That barrel, look at the scratches. Fresh ones. Yeah. Hey, it looks like there was a silencer on that barrel, Louie, not too long ago. But, say, we heard the shots. Yeah. Any ideas? Not a one. You? Uh, not on this silence a bit. But uh, I got a lot of ideas on friend murderer. Really? You saw who came in here last? Uh, uh well, yeah. Yeah, I, I, your I, client, that's so. The clown guy, mask and all, but the only clown at the party. Now, look, Louie, don't let's jump to conclusions. Jump to After conclusions? All. Pete, this conclusion don't have to be jumped at. This comes up, it hits you on the jaw like a hook from Marciano. Well, let's have a look at the late Mr. Tamville. Uh, yeah. Ain't on him, Pete. Motive for murder? An opal ring worth maybe a quarter of a million bucks. Missing. Fifteen minutes later, the joint is jumping with cops. The search of the ground turns up uh, a clown's costume. And an idea starts to percolate in your mind. So you do a little searching, too. You pick up an item which might be of unusual interest and you safely deposit it in your car. No guest is permitted to leave until he or she is thoroughly searched by an expert. And that turns up nothing, no opal ring. But the search of the guest does develop one item of importance. One guest is missing. Your client, Mr. George Reiner. Driving down in the car, there's Patricia Holm, there's Parker, and there's you. Mr. George Reiner. Well, I'm saving him for me. No use sending anyone else. If he skipped, he skipped. If he's at his apartment, then he's for me, personally. But why, Lieutenant? How? I, uh... Won't go into the why, but here's the how. He bumps Tamville, cops that opal ring, goes through those French doors, gets rid of the clown costume, and blows, period. Uh, I sent that gun downtown well in advance. I'm curious about the check on that, Pete. Mm. Which means that after we drop Miss home, we stop first at headquarters, Yes, yeah, huh? sure. Mm -hmm. Then we uh, call on Mr. Reiner. Very good. Very satisfactory. What are you so happy about? Uh, just a minute. What are you reaching in the glove compartment for? This. The glass? Well, what's... what's now, the... uh, 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 handle it gingerly, Lieutenant. You're going to do a fingerprint check on it. Now, one set figures to be mine. I'm very curious about the other set. Where did you get that glass? Stole it. A memento from Tambell's party. Hey, Louis, will you have that fingerprint check done for me? Sure, Petey. You insist... You deliver Patricia home, and you promise to come back there to bring her up to date on developments no matter what the hour. 
And then you deliver Parker to headquarters and you wait in the car while he goes in with the glass. When he comes out, he's got a peculiar glint in his eye. He tells you the fingerprint checks on the glass will take some time, but that he's put a rush on it. And then he clams. And when Parker clams, he's tighter than a barfly at curfew time. And finally, you're at George Reiner's apartment. Oh, Mr. Chambers, I'm so glad to see you. But Parker pushes through and shoves a gun under his nose. Mr. Reiner, is this your gun? Wait, uh, let me see. Yes, it's my gun. Well, it's nice of you to admit it, but whether you admit it or not, the serial numbers prove it's your gun. Fingerprints on it are smudges, but ballistics show this gun killed him. Now, any way you look at it, kiddo, you're up the creek. Killed? Killed home. Oh, will you look at him making with the innocent baby act. Killed Robbie Tamville. Robbie Tamville? Mr. Chambers, is this true? Yep. Well, who is this man? Lieutenant Louis Parker, homicide, who thought he was going to have an evening of relaxation. Do you deny that you killed him? You stole that ring, that opal from King Tut to one of those other wrapped-up mummies? Of course I deny it. Brother, you were seen to go into his room. The shots were heard. The gun was yours. The bullets from the gun killed him. The French windows were open. The clown costume was found on the grounds. You were the only guest, Missy. And you knew he had the opal on him. Now, where's the ring? I don't have it. Now, look, oh, you wait don't... A wait a minute, Louis. Just a minute, just a minute now. Mr. Reiner, you heard the lieutenant. Yes. Do you have any explanation? Well, I can only tell you what happened. Well, what did happen, Mr. Reiner? Well, uh, sometime after you left, my doorbell rang. I answered it, opened the door, but there seemed to be no one there. I stuck my head out and was struck on the back of the head. Uh, that's all I remember. When I regained consciousness, I, I was bound and gagged. Mm. It took me hours to untie myself. When I finally did, I looked about, thinking it was a robbery, trying to see what was stolen. Was anything stolen? Well, just my clown's costume and uh, my gun. Okay, Mr. Reiner. Suppose, just for the sake of my friend here, whose client you are, suppose I try to buy your story. Now, show us some proof, huh? Where's the rope that bound you, or is it wire or tape, maybe? And the gag around your mouth? Where I'm is sorry, it? Lieutenant. I was bound by a couple of my neckties, and the gag was one of my own handkerchiefs. But I do have a bump on my head. Oh, I'm sorry, Pete. I got to take this guy downtown. You tell Parker where he can reach you, and then off they go to headquarters. And off you go to Patricia Holmes' apartment. Dr. Holm is comfortable in satin lounging pajamas, and no doctor ever looked better in lounging pajamas. You bring her up to date on your facts, and then she takes you about showing you uh, her equipment, the fluoroscopes and the x-ray machines. And then you're settling down in a comfortable divan with a good doctor for some conversation about uh, doctoring when... Hello? It's Peter Chambers there. Oh, just a minute. It's for you, Peter. Oh, thanks. Hello? Here's the dope on that glass deal of yours. All right, Louis. One set of prints, yours. The others belong to a guy, uh, Bill Zukalski. Zukalski? What about him? Well, he's a Russian emigre. He used to work in a circus. He ate ground, glass, nails, tacks. You know, one of those guys. He did a bid about eight years ago for assault, then disappeared. Hey. Now, look, uh, Pete, what's your interest in the guy, and who is he? Look, Louis, pick up our Persian prince and bring him down here to Patricia Holmes' place and do it fast. Persian prince? William Zucco. You know what you're doing, Pete? Absolutely, and please, Louis, fast, huh? Half an hour later, Parker shows at William Zucco. You don't waste any time. You accuse Zucco of the murder of Robbie Tamville and the theft of the opal ring. Ah, you are talking through your hat, mister. If I had that opal on me, they'd have found it. I didn't have it, and I don't have it. Oh, yes, you have. Have I? Then prove it instead of talking like a big guy and doing nothing. Talk is cheap. Proof. Prove it. Demonstrate. First step in the demonstration is to 
clip him under the chin. And then you drag Zucco to Dr. Holmes' fluoroscope, and you stand him up behind it. And she starts the do jigger going. Hey, I see it. Clear as day. Where? Through the fluoroscope thing. It's in his stomach. Clear as day. The ring with the stone in it. Come on out, Pete. Take a look at this. Well, who, who's going to hold him out? Up? Me. I'll hold him up. I got it. Yeah. Sure enough, there it is. William Zucco, born Bill Zukowski, who can swallow nails and tacks and glass. Oh, what a hideaway, eh, Louis? Yeah. How can you frisk a guy when he's got the loot in his stomach? And ten minutes later, when you've convinced Zuko or Zakalski or whatever his name is that you've got him dead to rights, he straightens out the deal for you. Okay, so you knock out George Reiner and you clip his clown costume and his gun, huh? Yes, and I bring the stuff up to Tanville's and hide it in an upstairs room. And then when you're drinking with us, the butler calls you. No, it's a good thing I dropped your glass because I wiped it clean with a handkerchief, which, after I handed it to you, left only my prints on it and yours. Inside, I killed him. I used a silencer on Ryder's gun. One bullet. Then I came out, went upstairs, put the clown costume over mine, went back into Tamville's room, supposedly as Reiner, took the silencer off and put three more bullets into him. Then I ran out the French doors, threw the silencer into that brook nearby, but left the clown costume on the ground. Making sure to leave Reiner's gun in the room. Then I came back, and once more, I was one of the guests, the Persian prince. The way it looked, Reiner killed him, dropped off his costume, and ran away. I thought no suspicion would attach to me. Well, you might have been in the clear, if not for my friend, the shamus, eh? Pete, where did you get the idea for the prince on that glass? From you. Yeah, I know. From me. Well, you're the guy that told me that aside from us and Tanville himself, only two people knew about that opal being on him, Reiner and Zuko. Yeah. Now, Reiner retained me and paid me a fee to act as a bodyguard when he would buy it. If he's planning robbery and murder, well, would a reasonable man do that? No, he wouldn't. Well, whom would that leave if anything happened to the opal? Oh, our ex-circus bird here. Come on, pal. Oh, ho, ho, ho. I'm uh, going to have to handle you gently. After all, in a way, you're sort of a receptacle for evidence. And like that, you're pretty valuable. And so, after Parker and the valuable Mr. Zucco take their departure, you and the darling Dr. Patricia Holm finally settle down to some quiet conversation and peaceful tete-a-tete. -tete. Oh, you Peter Chambers, you. Oh, doctor. And there you've had crime and Peter Chambers. Dane Clark was starred as Peter Chambers. Crime and Peter Chambers transcribed was created and written by Henry Kane. Others in the cast were Bill Zuckert, heard as Lieutenant Parker, Joe Boland as Reiner, and Nancy Wilder as Patricia. It was directed by Fred Way. This is Fred Collins inviting you to tune in next week, same time, same station, for Dane Clark in Crime and Peter Chambers.
Crime and Peter Chambers has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. Welcome back. Um, well, a couple of thoughts on this one. First, it doesn't uh, appear that uh, uh, Jack Johnstone was the only uh, person to name characters after uh, people associated with the show or in the cast. Here we have a character named Bill uh, Zuko, uh, or William Zuko, and of course, William Zucker is the co-star of the show. Uh, a little bit of uh, convenience worked into the plot, uh, particularly with uh, Peter Chambers uh, making a connection with probably the only woman in New York City in 1954 who had an x-ray machine in her home. But other than that, a fairly good yarn with some uh, interesting features and nice uh, variation on the overall uh, theme of uh, Crime and Peter Chambers. All right, well, that will do it for today. We will be back tomorrow with the adventures of Philip Marlowe. And join us again next Tuesday for another episode of Crime and Peter Chambers. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off. <laughs>